All right, today I'm going to do a quick demo of one of the new features of the Databricks Lakehouse platform. In the past, if you wanted to use a SQL warehouse, then you had to use the SQL editor. While the SQL editor is capable, flexible, and easy to use, sometimes you might prefer to use a notebook for SQL analytics instead. Unfortunately, these notebook users could not get the many benefits that SQL warehouses provide. SQL warehouses are specifically designed for SQL workloads and will generally offer better price performance for SQL workloads compared to all-purpose compute. Today, you can now use a SQL warehouse with a Databricks notebook, and I'll show you just how easy it is to get started. Okay, so before we actually get started, you will need a SQL warehouse to use. You can see I have a small SQL warehouse already running. The only important thing to note is that you will need either a serverless or pro SQL warehouse. Classic is not supported, but as long as you have serverless or pro, you will be okay. All right, so back in the notebook, you can see that we have three cells. In cell one, we have some SQL code. In cell two, we have the exact same code, but in Python. And then in cell three, we have some more SQL code. In the top right-hand corner, we can see that we are not currently connected to any compute. So if we click the compute dropdown selector, we will be able to see that we have access to both regular all-purpose compute and SQL warehouses. When you click on a SQL warehouse, you will see a pop-up that says only SQL cells will be executed and markdown cells will be rendered. This means that any Scala, R, or Python cells will be skipped. It won't throw an error, they just won't be run. So I'll click the blue confirm button, and then back in the notebook, I'll click run all to execute all of the cells. We should see another pop-up telling us that only SQL cells will be executed, but we've already acknowledged this, so we can hit the blue run all button. After all of the cells are done executing, we can see that cell one, which was SQL, was run successfully, cell two, which was Python, was skipped, and cell three, which was also SQL, was run successfully. And that's it. That's just how easy it is to get started with this new feature today. I recommend checking out the documentation for more up-to-date information on this feature, as well as trying it out yourself and letting us know what you think.